The question says, draw the electrons on the diagram below to show the bonding in a molecule of fluorine. You only need to show the outer shell electrons. So first of all, we need to know how many electrons are in the outer shell of each fluorine atom. And to do that, we look at the group number. Fluorine is in group seven on the periodic table. So there's seven electrons on the outer shell. And I'm going to start putting those on, just not putting them in the sharing zone where the shells overlap not just yet. So I've used crosses for the left hand atom. So I'm going to put seven dots on the right hand atom. I recommend you put them on not in the sharing zone to start with. So you can see how many electrons you've got. And then it's just a case of sliding around the right number into the sharing zone. So we can see each fluorine atom has seven electrons on the outer shell. So each atom will need one more to complete that outer shell and have a full outer shell and be stable. So to complete the outer shell of the left hand one, we're going to share one of the dots from the right hand atom. So I'm going to rub out one of the electrons and instead I'm going to place that electron in the sharing zone. And if the right hand atom is sharing one electron with the left hand atom, that atom shares one back. So now I'm going to rub out one of the crosses and place that electron in the sharing zone. So if you have a look now, the left hand fluorine atom has got seven crosses of its own plus the one it's sharing. The right hand atom has got seven dots of its own plus the cross that it's sharing. And we can also show this covalent bond, this pair of shared electrons with a stick. So we could have F, stick F and that stick between the two fluorine atoms represents a pair of electrons being shared between the atoms. Question B says draw the electrons on the diagram below to show the bonding in a molecule of carbon dioxide. You only need to show the outer shell electrons. So first of all carbon is in group four so that tells us that carbon is going to have four electrons on its outer shell. So let's put them there, not sharing at the moment. Oxygen is in group six of the periodic table. So each oxygen atom is going to have six electrons on the outer shell. Same again for the right hand atom. Now we can see that each oxygen atom needs two more electrons to get a full outer shell and be stable. So we're going to move around two of these carbon atom electrons and put them in the sharing zone. And we must realize that if carbon is sharing two electrons with oxygen, that oxygen atom is going to share two electrons back with the carbon. So I'll move two crosses around now and put those in the sharing zone. Okay, now if we look at the left hand oxygen atom, that's also got six electrons on the outer shell, so it needs two more. So once again, we're going to move around two of the carbon atom electrons into the sharing zone. And if carbon's sharing two with oxygen, the oxygen atom is going to share two electrons back. So let's have a final count up to see if we've done it correctly. So the oxygen atom on the left has got six crosses of its own, plus the two electrons it's sharing from carbon. The oxygen atom on the right has got six crosses of its own, plus the two dots it's sharing from carbon. And the carbon atom in the middle has got its own four electrons that are shown with dots. And it's also sharing four electrons in total with the oxygen atom. So that's got eight electrons in the outer shell now as well. If you we wanted to draw the stick diagram, we've got a carbon atom, with an oxygen on each side. This time we've got two pairs of electrons being shared between the carbon and the oxygen. And that's what we call a double covalent bond. The final question says, why is carbon dioxide a gas at room temperature? Refer to structure and bonding. So first of all, I'll show you a diagram to remind you about the bonding in carbon dioxide. So we can see there are weak intermolecular forces between the molecules, and that's significant. So first of all, we need to say that carbon dioxide is made of simple molecules or small molecules. 
There are weak intermolecular forces between the molecules. It doesn't take much energy to break these forces. And that means carbon dioxide has a low boiling point. I'm going to put a link up here now to a previous video if you need a reminder about the properties of simple molecules.